We have been hearing stories of bravery this morning of women who have experienced pregnancy and challenges and helping those who are in need. I want to bring some up now who demonstrated bravery in a different way, who spoke truth to power in ways that was inspiring to me. I want to introduce 16-year-old Maddie Barenboim. Hi, I'm Madeline Barenboim, and we are here to talk. <laughs> We are here to talk about justice and the importance of women's reproductive rights. Now, why would a 16-year-old girl be qualified to talk about these kinds of issues? Women's reproductive rights affect every and all women, more specifically those of reproductive age. I have several friends who have gone through teen pregnancy and have had children in high school due to the lack of accessibility to contraceptives and proper education on these topics. It is one of my passions to be able to shed light upon these social justice issues and to use my own voice to try to make a change for the better. Thanks to this temple, I got the opportunity to go on the Lita Ken trip with Rabbi Greg and a few other students for REC. Lita Ken is a reform movement program for high schoolers all over the country. We spend a long weekend in Washington, D.C., learning about different social justice issues and why they're important in Judaism and how to write a speech to lobby about these issues to our own representatives, not only based on our personal beliefs and evidence, but also about the principles, values, and lessons that are taught in Judaism. On the last day, all of us go to visit the offices of our senators and representatives on Capitol Hill to share our ideas about social justice issues as constituents and ask for attention to be brought upon them. Two other girls and I, wrote speeches together about the importance of women's reproductive rights, which we shared in Senator Rick Scott's office. <laughs> Senator Scott is known to oppose reproductive rights. When we went into his office, we, went, we met with two of the people that work in his office, including an older man who was his national security advisor. The three of us read through our speeches, making our points, giving evidence, giving personal stories, and stating the importance of these issues, not only to ourselves, but to our Jewish beliefs. As soon as we finished speaking, this man decided to voice his opinions and cause a scene. <laughs> he said, and I quote, I feel attacked, referring to a speech given by three teenage girls about our personal rights to our bodily autonomy. Before any of the rabbis could even jump in, I replied that we were only expressing our opinions and concerns on an issue that we believe in and di that directly affects our everyday lives. He proceeded to argue and debate with me, going back and forth for about five to 10 minutes. He demanded that I give an oppositional viewpoint, which I did and disproved, <laughs> and I continued giving facts and evidence about different types of situations and medical reasons for an abortion ectopic pregnancies, incomplete miscarriages, and sickness in both the mother and the fetus. All of these complications result in a requirement of termination for the mother to live. I talked about the sexual assault rate in the US being one in every six women. I talked about women being unfit in mental health, financial stability, and physical health or stability, and so much more. His only argument and justification was that he had an Orthodox Jewish friend who didn't believe in abortion. He wouldn't believe that Judaism said women are entitled and even morally obligated to the termination of a pregnancy if the mother's well-being is at risk, mental, physical, financial, emotional, any and all well-being. He tried to argue with the three rabbis who were in the room about what our Torah says and dictates. Finally, he asked me what specific limitations would be included in a bill and what the bill might look like to me, a 16-year-old high schooler. I looked him in the eyes and I said, sir, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a legislator, but I have a uterus. <laughs> Excuse my language, but that shut him up pretty quickly. <laughs> what I've learned is that no matter how small a difference you may think you make, it still makes a difference. Use your voice, you have it for a reason. We are part of an incredible movement and community that gives us these opportunities and platforms to make a difference in this world for the better. We as women are the ones that are directly affected by this. 
our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers, on and on and on, have used their voices to get us where we are today. We need to continue to use our voices to make this world better and more just for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. Women's reproductive rights are not a political issue. They are not a moral dilemma to be discussed and debated. They are not something to be discussed by male politicians who do not understand women's bodies. They are a medical issue, a personal choice to be made by every woman individually. I only have one regret from my time in, sen in the Senator's office. I wish that I had asked that man why his religious beliefs are more important than mine and why they affect political issues when we have separation of church and state. Why do male politicians have more autonomy over my body than I do? Maddie's mom is in the third row cavelling right now, as she should be. I was in that room with Maddie and with the team in Senator Scott's office, and it was so powerful. And I was so proud of you, Maddie, to see what you did, to see how you stood up for yourself, for our community, for our people, and for our tradition. And you didn't talk about the color of red that that man's face turned when he realized that he was beaten in a debate by a 16-year-old. Congratulations and thank you again. Let's hear it again for Maddie.